To get the proceedings off the ground, I would now like to invite our chief guest, His Excellency, High Commissioner of India to Singapore, Mr. Javed Afshar, to say a few words on stage. So good evening, everyone. Uh, Rohit Sharma and your lovely wife, Rifika, welcome to Singapore. I didn't realize I was to open the innings today, um, but uh, just as well, drawing inspiration from you. Uh, first of all, a hearty congratulations on winning the Asia Cup and also, once again, coming back to the number two position in the ODI batting ranking. <laughs> You led from the front, both as a captain and as a batsman, including in that very eventful last final match. But as all of us here would have observed somewhat with great amusement and affection, it couldn't have been in more contrasting styles. As a batsman, as Cash just said, there is a sense of ease and languid grace that uh, you see whenever he scores, no matter if he's scoring 100 of 30 balls or batting in a test match. But when he captains, there is that animated, excited, intense engagement in marshalling the resources around the field. So very often I find the two very contrasting uh, sides of his personality. But when you think of cricket, it isn't just about scoring runs, taking wickets, winning matches. To me, more than in any other sport, it is also about elegance, about grace, about the aesthetics, the sight of white on, on a green field in an early morning with dews on the ground and a red ball uh, playing. Uh, it is also about the style with which cricket is played. And quite often, you're there on the cricket uh, ground, not just so much to see fours and sixes being hit for purists like us. It's also about uh, how a person leans into his cover drive how he rockets back and forces a ball uh, square off the wicket. There is how his follow through comes through, uh, how even he takes his stance. I mean, these are things uh, that make cricket such a wonderful thing to watch. And there are today in this world very few pleasing sights as much as watching Rohit Sharma in full flow. All of us would agree to that. And there is something that reminds you of a David Gower or a Brian Lara or even Mansoor Ali Khan Pataudi, uh, you would see in Zamamun Haq sometimes in him, all the cricketers who stand out as much uh, for their style and elegance as for the runs that they have scored. And of course, Rohit Sharma is always a great pleasure to watch even if that innings were to be very short, because every shot of his, even when he defends a ball, uh, says something about that extraordinary talent and extraordinary grace which he brings to cricket. But then there is, of course, as we've just heard, a number of, uh, number of great records to his credit. Um, I uh, would say that some of us who grew up watching a Mudassar Nazar score a century of some 419 balls, or, or, or well, no, uh, no, no disparaging comment, an Anshuman Gaikwad getting to 201 in something like 400 and some 30 balls or something, or a, or a Kurupu in Sri Lanka taking 775 balls to get to 201. All of this was in 1780s. Many of you weren't born, born then. But you know that was the time when you could actually have the luxury of sitting through a whole day watching someone score 30 of, of an entire day's play. But then you see someone who nearly missed a triple century just because he didn't have six more balls to play. And he got 264. <laughs> He got 264 of some 170 balls, if I recall. And that is something like, if you say, just a little over half the 50 overs, right? Some calculates would tell you that. So I often wonder, imagine who would have thought that when Saeed Anwar got to 185, 195, that there would be a day when someone would actually get uh, to close to a triple century in a 50 over international game. And to do it without one false stroke. No swatting, no inelegant shot, because there's nothing worse than an inelegant shot in cricket, even if it gets you a four or a six. So that's the joy of watching him play. And we all wish him continuing success. Uh, I know that there is a big series ahead of it, 
and we hope that he finds place in all three formats of the game because cricket is richer, India is richer for his presence on the field. But there is something more to him that I think is important to point out because be beyond just as professionals, we're also human beings. And when you read his tweets, you see the generosity of spirit, the sense of uh, team play, the camaraderie that he brings to his uh, players, even when he himself is not performing at his best. And that takes some kind of a mental strength uh, to achieve. There's also his life journey, a life journey that had so many barriers and so many challenges that would have defeated lesser persons. But it was just, I think, his dedication, his focus, his just extraordinary rich uh, talent that brought him to where he is and to give us all so much joy. Thank you for being here. I think your presence is going to do wonders to cricket in Singapore. Now, there are many things that Singapore is number one and number two or number three in the world at, but cricket is certainly not one of them. And, but we know that uh, Singapore also has the ability to set its target and actually go about achieving them in whatever field it chooses to do. Uh, cricket is once again on the rise under the able guidance of uh, Mr. Ghaznavi, who is uh, shepherding a small nation into the higher echelons of cricket. I think the numbers, the ranking is already very encouraging from what I hear. As some of you might not know, there are 106 cricket teams in the league over here. We've just had Mahendra Singh Dhoni in, in January uh, to open his academy. Uh, we now have here uh, 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 Rohit Sharma. We've had a few cricketers come in last year as well. But all of this will, I think, add to raising the standard of game. Uh, we are also, I must say, uh, hopeful that at some point we'll be able to bring back cricket of uh, senior cricket back to uh, Singapore, perhaps to that magical field in Padang where we hope uh, Rohit Sharma can break a few windows in the National Gallery, uh, which is certainly, given the distance he manages, it would be certainly possible. But think of it, if you can have F1 with 20 cars going around that Padang for two hours, you can certainly have a good game of cricket in Padang. <laughs> and, and I'm confident that if we could set up floodlights for a, for a track of 5.1 kilometers for 60 laps to run on F1, we can even set up a floodlit cricket in Padang. And imagine as the sun is setting and the lights of the city skyline is coming up and the cricketers are on the field. It would do wonders for Singapore's tourism in South Asia and the rest of the world. It would do wonders for the city. So I've been in conversation also with uh, the current administrator of BCCI to see if we can get cricketers over here. Their schedules are so packed that they, I think, think in terms of five years before they can find a window. But we hope that we can get cricket over here, and I'm sure that will help also Singapore climb the rankings as it has done in many other fields. But tonight is a day we, evening where we celebrate cricket in its full glory and beauty. And, uh, and for that, we have here Rohit Sharma here. And so thank you very much. Thank you for including me this evening. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you very much.